In our last lecture, we proved the following cofactor expansion of the determinant. So here we fix any index i from 1 to n. So then we can express the determinant of a matrix as uh, the sum where j goes uh, from 1 to n, aij times the cofactor aij. So here i is fixed and uh, we have a summation in J. Today we are going to start with the following theorem. So this is called fake cofactor expansion. So let A be a square n by n matrix and uh, let us fix now two indices i different from k and uh, i and k are both from uh, 1 to n but two different uh, values. So then so now if I write uh, some sum which is analogous to that uh, cofact expansion. So if I write the sum j goes from 1 to n a i j times uh, a k j, then this result will be zero. So let us consider the following example. So let's uh, look at the determinant of the matrix 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, 2, 5, 7. And uh, let us take the cofactor expansion. So let us take i equals 1. So we are going to write the cofactor expansion of the determinant uh, along the first row. So then we get, so we get 1 times uh, the determinant obtained by removing first row and first column. So 1, 1, 5, 7. Then uh, we have uh, alternating signs, so we'll have minus 2 times the determinant obtained by removing first row and the second column. So 1, 1, 2, 7. And then again plus 3 times the determinant obtained by removing first row and the last column. So that will be 1, 1, 2, 5. So if we evaluate this, so the first determinant is 7 minus 5, which is 2, so we have 2. Then the second determinant is 7 minus 2, which is 5, so this is minus 2 times 5. And the last determinant is 5 minus 2, which is 3, so plus 3 times 3. And uh, so we get 2 minus 10 plus 9, so this is equal to 1. So we conclude that uh, the determinant of uh, this matrix is equal to 1 and we obtain it uh, using cofactor expansion of the determinant. Now let us uh, run the fake cofactor expansion for this matrix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take k equals 1 and i is equal to 3. So what this means is that I take the entries of the matrix that correspond to the last row but cofactors will correspond to the first row. So the cofactors are already written down here. So then if we do this, so we will get 2 times the determinant 1, 1, 5, 7. Right? So what we took is we took the entry from the last row, but the cofactor was corresponding to the first row. So then we have uh, minus, so then the next en entry is 5 times uh, the same cofactor as we took here, 1, 1, 2, 7. 
and the last entry is 7. And uh, the cofactor is uh, plus the determinant 1, 1, 2, 5. So what do we get uh, in, as a result of this calculation? So here we get 2 times, well, this determinant is 2. Then uh, minus 5 times uh, this determinant is 5. And uh, plus uh, 7 times 3. And uh, so this is uh, 4 minus 25 plus 21. And we see that the result is 0. And uh, so this is exactly what is predicted by the fake cofactor expansion formula. Let us give the proof for the fake expansion formula. Construct matrix B by replacing row K in A with um, another copy of row i. So this means that uh, we take row i and duplicate it uh, by placing another copy in row k. So matrix B has uh, two equal rows. And uh, this means that determinant of the matrix B is equal to zero. And let us expand determinant of B along row number K. So what we have is zero, which is determinant of B. And uh, this is equal to the sum J goes from 1 to n, b k j times uh, cofactor b k j. Now, how can we rewrite this sum? So we have the sum, j goes from 1 to n. So what is b k j? So b k j is the entry in row k of matrix B. But we constructed B by placing in row k another copy of row i for matrix A. So this means that bkj is equal to aij. So this was the entry from row i of matrix A. And how do we construct cofactors? So to construct cofactor bkj, we raise row k and column j. But if row k is raised, then matrix B becomes identical to matrix A. And for this reason, the cofactor BKJ is equal to the cofactor AKJ. And uh, now we get the fake cofactor expansion. So we get that this sum is equal to zero because this zero is the determinant of matrix B. In the same way, we can obtain the fake column expansion. So here, so we fix k different from j. And uh, so then we have the sum i goes from 1 to n, a i j times the cofactor a i k. So the sum is going to be 0, provided that k is different from j. Now we define the adjoint matrix. Is, um, so this is a matrix of uh, cofactors. So that is The joint matrix of A has uh, a cofactor Aij in uh, position Ij, so row i column j. So this means that uh, we compute 
all possible cofactors for the given square matrix and we fill a new matrix with the cofactors. Let us uh, state the following theorem. Let A be a square n by n matrix with a non-zero determinant. In this case, we know that uh, such a matrix will be invertible. And here we can write down the formula for the inverse of uh, this matrix. So A inverse is equal to 1 over determinant of the matrix A times uh, the adjoint matrix of A transpose. So what we do is we compute the adjoint matrix we take its transpose and we divide by the determinant. Let's do an example where we take the case of a 2 by 2 matrix. So suppose A is the matrix A, B, C, D. Now let us write down what is the adjoint matrix of A. So this is again a 2 by 2 matrix. And here we need to write down the cofactors. So the first cofactor, so here we erase the first row and the first column. So we get uh, a 1 by 1 matrix D, and it's taken with a positive sign. So we have D here. So the second cofactor, we erase first row and second column. So we get 1 by 1 matrix C. So the determinant uh, is equal to C, but uh, the signs uh, alternate, so we need to put minus C here. So then uh, here the cofactor will be minus B, and the last cofactor will be A. This theorem claims that if the determinant of this matrix AD minus BC is uh, not equal to zero, then the inverse of uh, matrix A is equal to one over AD minus BC times the transpose of the joint matrix. So we take the transpose of this, so we get D minus B minus C A. Let us uh, verify this claim. For this we need to multiply together uh, this matrix and matrix A. So we have 1 over AD minus BC times the matrix D minus B minus C A times the matrix A, which is A B C D. So what do we get? So we have 1 over A D minus B C times, so here we have D A minus B C, then when we take the dot product of the first row with the second column, we have db minus bd, so that's zero. Then here we have minus c times a plus a times c, so this is zero. And uh, here we have uh, minus bc plus ad. And uh, what we see is that after we divide this matrix by ad minus bc, we get precisely the identity matrix. So this uh, becomes a nice formula for the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. And uh, so this uh, formula is pretty handy. For matrices of larger sizes, this formula for the inverse uh, is not computationally efficient. The reason is that in order to use this formula, we need to compute n squared cofactors, and this is time consuming. So for matrices of size 3 and more, it is uh, better to use uh, our old method uh, that is based on row reduction. Nonetheless, this formula has a great theoretical value when we need to analyze A inverse. Let's give a proof of um, this formula for the A inverse. So let us call this uh, right-hand side matrix by F. So this is 1 over determinant of A times a joint 
matrix of A transpose. So we need to show that the product A times F is equal to identity matrix. In order to analyze this, so let us call this product A times F as H. And uh, let us compute uh, the entries of the matrix H. So what is HKS? So here we have a product of two matrices. So we have a formula for the entry of the product of two matrices. HKS is equal to the sum J goes from 1 to N. We have AKJ times F js now what would this be so we need to write down the value for the entry fjs so this has a factor of 1 over determinant of a then we have the sum j goes from 1 to n we have a k j and uh, so this entry fjs comes from the transpose of the joint matrix. So this means uh, that we need uh, to take SJ entry in the uh, joint matrix. So we need to switch these two indices and take the entry of the joint matrix. But the entry of the joint matrix uh, is a cofactor of matrix A. So here we're going to get a cofactor A SJ. Now we analyze this sum. So we have two possibilities. So we could have k is equal to s or k is different from s. So if k is equal to s, then this becomes nothing but the cofactor expansion of the determinant along uh, row k. And uh, so then here this sum will become determinant of a. And uh, if we divide by determinant of a, so we get 1. So this is if k is equal to s. So if k is equal to s, then we get 1 from uh, the cofactor expansion of the determinant along row k. And if k is uh, different from s, we are going to get 0 because this will become a formula for the fake cofactor expansion. So here, so this 1 comes from cofactor expansion. of the determinant and uh, the zero comes from the fake cofactor expansion. Now what does this mean? So we computed the value hks and obtained that if k is equal to s then the value is 1. If k is different from s then the value is 0. So how does the matrix h look like? Matrix H will have ones along the diagonal and zeros outside of the diagonal. So what we get is uh, that H is indeed equal to identity matrix and uh, F thus is equal to the inverse of the matrix of A. And uh, so this proves uh, this formula. Our next theorem is called the Kramer's rule. So let AX equals B be a system of uh, N linear equations with N unknowns. And uh, determinant of a matrix A is not equal to zero. So if determinant is non-zero, so this means that the reduced row echelon form of A is the identity matrix and then the system has a unique solution. If uh, it has a unique solution, we can uh, in principle write it down. And uh, so here is a way how to get an explicit formula for the unique solution of this system. So then for k going from 1 to n, the solution 
the value of the variable xk is equal to the following quotient. It's determinant of uh, matrix BK divided by determinant of a matrix A, where BK is um, a matrix obtained from A by replacing column number k with uh, the right hand side column b. So what Kramer's rule gives us is an explicit formula for the solutions uh, of a system of linear equations in the case when this solution is unique. Let's do a simple example. So consider a two by two system of linear equations. So seven, three, two, five. And the right hand side column is one, one. So we need to solve uh, this system of equations. So here, so determinant of matrix A is uh, seven times five minus two times three. So this is 35 minus six, so that is 29. And what are the matrices B1 and B2? So B1 is a matrix which is obtained from A by replacing first column with the right hand side column. So we get 1, 1, 3, 5. And the matrix B2 is obtained in the same, same way, only now we replace the second column. So we have 7, 2, and 1, 1. What are the determinants of uh, these matrices? So determinant of B1 is 5 minus 3, so that's 2. And determinant of B2 is equal to 7 minus 2, which is 5. And uh, so then the claim is uh, that the unique solution of the system of linear equations is given by x1, which is equal to determinant of b1 over determinant of a. So this is 2 over 29, and x2 has value determinant of b2 over determinant of a, and which is 5 over 29. Let us prove uh, Kramer's rule. So if we have this equation ax is equal to b and uh, a is invertible, then we can write our unique solution by multiplying both sides by a inverse. So we get that x is equal to the product of a inverse times b. Our previous theorem tells us how can we write a, a inverse. So we can write a inverse as 1 over determinant of a times a joint matrix of a transpose times the right hand side column b. Now, how, what is the value of xk, the kth component of a vector x? So this will be 1 over determinant of a times, uh, then uh, here we have a matrix and we multiply it by a column and we want to find kth component of the result. So the kth component of the result will be the dot product of the kth row of this matrix times this column. So we can write this uh, as kth row of uh, this matrix joint of A transpose times column B. But then the kth row of the transpose matrix is the same as kth column of uh, the adjoint matrix. So what we get is that xk is equal to 1 over determinant of A times the dot product of kth column of the adjoint matrix 
So we remove the transpose times column B. And now we can write this as a sum. So we have 1 over determinant of A times the sum J goes uh, from 1 to N. So if we are talking about kth column, so this means that the second index is going to be K. And uh, so the a joint matrix is filled with cofactors. So we have A J K times uh, B J. But then what we notice is that uh, this sum is the expansion of uh, the determinant of B K along column number K. So indeed, column number K in this matrix is uh, made of uh, the right-hand side column. So this gives us this entry BJs. And uh, if we remove uh, this column, then uh, what we see is that the cofactors BJK are exactly equal to cofactors AJK. Because if we remove column K from matrix BK or from matrix A, the results will be the same. So at the end of the day, we get determinant of BK, right? So by this uh, cofactor expansion formula, divided by determinant of A. And uh, so this is uh, the claim of uh, Kramer's rule. For matrices of larger size, the Kramer's rule is computationally inefficient because we can solve this system of linear equations by doing row reduction. And uh, this computation has the same complexity as computing one determinant, which is also computed uh, using row reduction. And Kramer's rule requires computation of n plus one determinants. So this means that there is n plus one times uh, work uh, to apply Kramer's rule as uh, to solve uh, the system of uh, linear equation Ax equals b using row reduction. Nonetheless, Kramer's rule can be a valuable tool for analysis even in applied situations. Imagine that uh, you are doing experimental sciences and you are solving a system of linear equations where all coefficients uh, come from measurements and thus inherently contain errors. And you want to do the stability analysis. So you want to understand how your solution depends on these errors. In order to understand uh, how the errors uh, in the coefficients of your system of linear equations affect the values of your solution, so to carry out this analysis, uh, you need to apply Kramer's rule. Yeah.